Hey guys, it's first day of school for me. I got a haircut. I moved where I'm doing the video because I didn't like how the light has been hitting my video. So now I have a whole setup on top of my refrigerator. We'll see how long this lasts. And today I wanna get into a little bit about like my civil engineering experiences, why I chose it kinda, the things I've done with it so far, my experiences within my civil department at my school, um, and then what my plans are for my future and career and all that. I'm not gonna get into some of the negatives and things like that with my civil engineering department today. I'm gonna to say that for another video because I could spend a whole video kind of talking about some of the issues I've had with my position in the civil engineering department. Um, but other than that, let me just get into why I chose to be a civil engineer and the things I plan on doing. So like pretty much every other civil engineer, it started out for me that I was playing with Legos as a little kid and someone came up to me and said, hey, you should be an engineer. And I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. I'll just do that for the rest of my life. And that's exactly what I did. Someone in grade school was like, hey, you'd like civil engineering because you like building and construction and things like that, but you're really smart and mathy and all that. So be a civil engineer. It's like the math and science of civil engineer of construction and buildings and design work and all that. I'm like, okay, cool. That's exactly why I ended up doing it. I love, I originally wanted to always go into like big buildings, like designing skyscrapers and apartment buildings and all that kind of stuff seemed very cool to me. Um, even residential house building construction seems cool to me. Ultimately, my first offer was at HNTB where I got to work with bridges and stuff and I've enjoyed that a decent amount. So now I'm going more towards bridge construction uh, side of things, the structural side of transportation in a way, a lot of ramps and bridges, um, retaining walls in a sense. So yeah, civil engineering, if you didn't know, basically technical and design side of all the construction stuff that happens, all the math and science behind it, all the codes that go into it, of uh, how strong and safe everything needs to be. Um, very different from architecture and that architecture is more of an aesthetic design, things to do with where the windows are placed and what's the general shape of the building to make it look cool and um, all that kind of stuff. Civil engineering takes those designs of the architecture into account when they make up their structurally sound safe design. Um, other than that, the big reasons why I've wanted to be a civil engineer is I really wanna leave my mark on the world. I wanna make sure that when I'm gone, I have things that I've left behind that last. That's one of the reasons why my big goal in life is to be a father, but I think that's better kept for another video. Um, also, I want to be part of improving the world as it is now and helping keep people safe. I think there's a lot that can be fixed with our society today. One of my big ideas has always been, hey, we should put solar panels on the roads like laminate tiles so they can be replaced and changed and you can have lights on them and all that stuff. I've no recently I found out that that's a concept that is happening in some places and stuff, which seems very cool. I'm hoping to someday get involved with that kind of stuff, even though it's more electrical engineering, but whatever. Um, but yeah, civil engineering has been something that's stuck out to me since I was probably around eight years old is like when the civil engineering part came into existence. Engineer was something I was told from basically birth. As soon as I picked up my first Lego set or those giant block versions of Legos, I was told, hey, you should be an engineer. And I've stuck with it since then. Um, now my role in civil engineering so far, one of the big things I've done is it, my, at my school, there's the American Society of Civil Engineers, ASC. It's an organization that sets all the codes and standards nationally on a adult real world level. Um, and on the student level at college, the ASC chapter is in charge of running different events for the students, specifically there's competition teams. There used to be the Steel Bridge team, which disassociated with ASC due to some, I guess you could call political differences as to whether they should include foreign competitors, foreign teams into this American Society of Civil Engineer competition. Um, there was also a riff about how much extra paperwork and stuff like that should go into the competition. Steel Bridge is a very hands-on competition and they wanted to keep it that way. They didn't want all these extra reports and paperwork and things like that. Um, the main competition of ASC specifically is Concrete Canoe now, which has been going on for decades. And our school has been very good at both Steel Bridge and Concrete Canoe in recent history. They had a 10 year wedding streak that recently stopped basically when I started becoming a student. Um, in my time, of running our school's ASE chapter over the past three years. I've added new competitions teams like the Timber Bridge team. Um, and I've also helped kind of revitalize the 
organization organization side of things a lot of it was just the organization existed just so the teams could exist there was no club meetings or events or anything like that it was all just help the team help the teams help the teams i've kind of revitalized the organization part of it so now we have guest speakers and social events we go to volunteering events all that kind of stuff and i think it's really helped improve things i think i was able to increase our membership of actually paid involved members from like 50 to around two or 300 now, um, which is very cool. I'm very proud to be part of that. And it's one of my big accomplishments in life so far is to be able to rebuild the organization and take it under my wing and mold it exactly how I believe it should be. Um, I recently left that position. It was my last semester was last semester doing it because it's based on calendar years and it doesn't make sense for me to continue doing it after I graduate. But I handed it off to someone I think is very capable. I hope that they keep it running as well as I think I've had it set up. I did a lot to try and automate the process, make things easier to plug and chug and do without thinking about too much. So I think it will remain strong for years to come. Um, that leads into where things got me involved with the civil engineering department specifically. Um, since I was a leader in that ASC role, I became a leader within the department as a whole. Um, in a sense, the department kind of made me their student representative, the person they reach out to when they need to talk about things related to the student life and student interactions, things like that. Um, some things being as minute as they hear that students were invited to an event by a company, they, they want to reach out to the company and ask how they could help, things like that. Uh, scholarship opportunities and just a lot of things between the department and students and who deserves scholarships, they'll ask me for my opinion of students that were super involved with clubs and organizational things that show signs of leadership and involvement and all that that they should give scholarships to. Um, so they really uh, utilized me to my fullest while I was a leader in the department. Um, I also started taking on a role as being the liaison, I guess you'll call it, for open houses. And anytime a, high, anytime a group of high schoolers came to this school to see civil engineering or engineering in general, they would come to me and ask for my help and help me. They would ask me to find volunteers to also help out with the events. And I've liked that a lot. I really enjoy doing that kind of thing. Um, there were some issues with me doing it definitely too much. It's not my role to do those kind of things. I'm my role is supposed to be just help them get volunteers and show up the day of the event. I became the primary planner of all those events where I would set up who's where, what people are coming at what times, all the organizational type stuff, which I'm very good at. I don't mind doing it. Um, and until very recently, I didn't mind not being compensated for that in a sense. Um, a lot of that was a lot of emails back and forth and stuff. I ended up making a 20 plus page PowerPoint for the open houses and a 12 plus page guide slash uh, rule book kind of thing for all the volunteers to use so they come up with ideas and know the general flow of the day, all that, which is something I believe should have existed already. And I ended up being the one that made it, which I don't mind, like I said, um, especially since they've the department has really done their best to recognize me for the things I do. Um, they reach out to me for any scholarship they think I could be eligible for since I'm on a full ride at NJIT. There's not a lot of financial scholarships they can give me, but when it comes to non-financial based scholarships, they always reach out to me. When it comes to major leadership scholarships, they reached out to me. And over my past, probably basically the past two years, they've helped me obtain 15, probably well over $15,000 in scholarships outside of the scholarships I already had. So I'm not only not paying for school. I have gained a lot of money through school. They also reached out to me first when they were looking for a greater position for a very easy class that they thought would be a good chance for them to kind of make up for the fact that I was doing a lot of extra work for them by giving me this job and saying, hey, here's a greater position that we're going to pay you 15 hours a week for. It probably won't take you more than five hours a week to realistically do it. Um, and even without being a greater this semester, they've kind of given me a role where I am still very involved with all the open houses and career days, helping them set up anytime high schoolers come in, all that. So they're somewhat paying me for that in some small way, which is nice. Um, definitely, I know for a fact the school definitely recognizes my efforts in my leadership roles and stuff, and I am very appreciative of them. But there is definitely issues within our civil engineering department that need to be addressed very, very soon. But like I said, I'll get into some of those issues in a future video. 
Um, so I want to wrap up this video within the next five minutes just talking about my career plan. What are you going to do after I graduate? And the first step to that is actually March 28th. I'm going to be sitting for my Fundamentals of Engineering exam. That's the first step towards getting my license as a civil engineer. It's a six-hour exam. You sit in front of a computer. It's a computer-based exam in an exam room where you're just sitting there for six hours. You take the exam, and when you pass that, you are then an engineer in training in the EIT. From there, you could begin your four years of design experience that's necessary to get your license. And then after you have your uh, FE completed, your Fundamentals of Engineering exam completed, four years of design experience, you can then sit for an eight-hour professional engineering licensure exam, which is, I believe, right now it's a pen-on-paper exam. You bring all the books you could possibly imagine. People roll in with suitcases full of books, and you sit for that exam. After those two exams, the design experience, that's when you're a full-fledged licensed civil engineer. Luckily, there are ways that I can kind of expedite that. One thing being I'm going to obtain my master's through NJIT um, over the next three years, and that reduces the required time I need for design experience by one year. So I'll have my master's within three years, and I'll also be able to sit for my professional engineering licensure exam within the next three years. Um, the only reason I really am continuing with my master's is because of that reduction in time needed for design experience to help me get my professional engineering license faster. And also because HNTB is gracious enough to pretty much pay for my entire master's. Um, they're going to be giving me $10,000 a year towards my master's, which is enough for me to take a class every semester, including summer, which is all I really planned on doing anyway. I had no real intention of doing more than one class a semester because I think between work and doing classes part-time, that's pretty much my limit while still maintaining my sanity. Um, and then overall, once, once I graduate in May, I plan on starting at HNTB in June as a full-time structural engineer. Um, I spent my past two summers interning at HNTB. I really love the environment, love the, my coworkers I'll be working with. I know a decent amount about the company and their benefits and their pay and all that kind of stuff. And I do enjoy it. It's good benefits. Like I said, the master's and that's just tip of the iceberg as far as benefits, all the health insurance, dental, vision, all those kind of things, the smaller benefits and stuff, they're all in there. I'm not going to get into that in a super detailed manner, but overall, I like it a lot. It's close enough to home that I plan on commuting from home, living at home still for the next three years while I build up my bank of money kind of thing. My goal in life is I always want to buy things straight out. I don't want to really be a renter if I could ever possibly avoid it. So my hope is that over the next three years, working at H&TB at the salary I'm making, I should be able to save enough money to buy an actual like very, very small place um, or at the very least put a down payment for a real home, not really an apartment kind of thing. And move forward with that, especially if I start living with someone, they're paying that kind of thing, I could definitely afford it. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, after I get my master's in PE in three years, I'm working at HNTB for three years, living at home, that's when I plan on really moving out and taking the next step in my career, which whether it be with HNTB or not, that's kind of where my next tier jump comes in. That's where I would expect to get my higher role as a civil engineer either with HNTB or maybe get scouted by another company and they reel me in with a higher position, higher pay, something like that. I would love to stay at HNTB if they give me the opportunity, but that's something we'll have to see where it goes. And then from there on out, the next like 20, 30 years, my plan is pretty much to keep working as a civil engineer, climb up that way until in about 20, 30 years, I'm ready to leave civil engineering and go more into education. If it weren't for money and stigma and all the politics of education and that kind of stuff, I my dream job would probably be some kind of educator. I really like working with kids and stuff, helping out with their development. That's why I took on a role as a president in college for a student club. Um, so I would consider coming back as a professor unless my school changes a lot. I don't know if I'd come back to NJIT specifically, but I would like to take on a role as a professor, but more likely I'd be just as happy in a high school uh, STEM teacher type role, whether it be math, science, or just like an actual STEM professor. A lot of schools have that, especially tech schools. They have like a CAD 
uh, expert, uh, computer animated design expert, those kind of things, or even just taking on an advisor role in academia, similar to like my academic advisor who I could talk a long, long time about, about how I've been doing his job for him and how I could probably do better than him at his job. But we're not going to get into that because I'm over the time I wanted to already for this video. And with that, I'm actually going to wrap things up here. That was pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow with another video tomorrow. And I'll talk to you then.